What's up guys, I'm Dean, better known as Dean's Beans, a name that I don't like, and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I talk movies, where I talk comics, but mostly movies and sometimes TV shows and movies. Today, I'm back on the topic of the Batman. I say back on the topic, I haven't really talked about it on my YouTube channel, but I'm here to talk about the Batman and more specifically what villains I would like to see enter this universe and explore in upcoming movies and TV shows set in the Pattonverse. The Pattonverse is a phrase I just came up with. It's a portmanteau of Robert Pattinson and Universe. Okay, so I have a list of 40 uh, Batman villains who we haven't seen in this universe yet, and I'm going to rank them all by how much I would like to see them in the, this universe. I haven't ranked it yet, so I will be doing this ranking in the recording, uh, but I've got the list of the 40 biggest Batman villains, really, and I'm going to go through them in alphabetical order and just rank them by how much I'd like to see them appear in the same universe as the Batman. Boom, 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 boom. And while recording this video, I'm going to be eating a packet of Haribo Giant Straws because I can, and if you don't want me to, um, too bad, this is my YouTube channel. Um, go watch someone else's video. So like I said, we're going through these in alphabetical order and let's get started straight away because there are 40 villains to get through. That might be too many. I'll see how I feel at the end. The first one on our list is Anarchy. It's not a character I know loads about. I know pretty much the only stuff I know is from the Arkham games, I think, because they're in Arkham Origins. And I think this villain would be interesting to include because the, the idea of... Uh, the, the Gotham politics in the universe of the Batman is more fleshed out than perhaps they've never been. So introducing this idea of, yeah, I want anarchy and making it more of like a political thriller, I think would be really interesting. And the design, it's cool. And I think the design would fit this universe well. Anarchy is in first place in our leaderboard. And the second villain we're going to talk about is Bane. So we've seen Bane quite recently, so that is some minus points for why I don't want to see him. We do get hints at his character when Batman in injects something which appears to be Venom at the end of the Batman. So that's plus points for him. Uh, I would like to see this character. Maybe get someone like Dave Bautista to play him. I think that would be great. And I think they, if they did it, they'd have to lean more into this guy being like a genetically enhanced guy and have him be actually big. And I just don't know how well that would fit this world. I feel like... I'm not a massive fan of um, Tom Hardy's Bane. I think they didn't lean into the superpowers and the comic bookiness enough. And I think this universe is more heightened, uh, so does have more of a chance of actually doing that. But I still, Bane would not be anywhere near the top of my list, so he is going in last place, aka second place to begin with. Next up, we have Black Mask. We saw Black Mask even more recently with Ewan McGregor playing him, and I enjoyed that performance a lot. And I don't think Black Mask is that interesting a character. It's just another mobster, you know? I don't think there's anything really for me that differentiates Black Mask from, like, Falcone or Moretta or anyone like that. So I will be putting him below Bane. So he's also going into last place. After Black Mask, the fourth villain on our list is Bronze Tiger. Now, I'd quite like to see Bronze Tiger, I think, because not as a main antagonist, obviously, just maybe as a hired mercenary, because I'd like to see... Uh, this Batman go up against someone who's more of a physical threat for him, which is something I didn't mention while talking about Bane. So I'm going to put Bronze Tiger in second place. You know, I think it'd be fun for him to show up in a scene or two and fight uh, Batman. Next up, we have the Calculator. This is like a machine guy who can control computers and stuff, from my understanding, at least. I remember him appearing in Arrow. Uh, I, I, I see no need for this character. I see no desire for why they'd want to put him in, because there's no matter of phantom and he's not very well known. So I'm going to put him below Black Mask. The Calculator is now in last place. After the Calculator, we have the Calendar Man. I'd love to see the Calendar Man. Uh, the comic book he appears in most is The Long Halloween, and that's basically what the first of the Batman movie is. But, you know, he'd be a fun to appear in a scene or two, or maybe just put him in the Arkham TV show. I'd love to see Calendar Man. And I, believe it or not, I'm going to put him in first place right now, above Anarchy. So, so deal with that. Next up, we have Catman, not Catwoman, Catman, definitely a more D-list slash C-list Batman villain. And also, this is another one I see no real need to. Just, I'm going to put it them above the Calculator and below Black Mask, because the Calculator, I don't really see how they'd fit into this world. And Catman would, would fit in the world, to be honest. So, he's going into sixth place. Okay, we are... Mm. I just didn't eat a, a straw bright. Uh, next up, we have Clayface. This is a character I really want to see in live action. Maybe with someone like Nicolas Cage. I just don't know if this universe would work. I feel like there is a way you could do the rejected actor thing. And I think 
a shape-shifting superpower could work because he can make himself look like anyone. I feel like there is a way to do it, and I want them to do this character. Am I going to put them above Calendar Man? No, I'll put them in second place in between Calendar Man and Anarchy. Okay, speaking of silly Batman villains, Clayface and that silly. But next up we have the Clock King. This would be a fun minor one or even someone just to shove in the Arkham TV show. Something I want to see from the Arkham TV show is loads of minor villains like Clock King and that sort of thing. I'm going to put him in. Let's go. I'm going to put between Bane and Black Mask. I think the Clock King would be fun. Okay, next up another silly villain. We have Condiment King. Part of me wants to put Condiment King in first place because I'd love to see how Matt Reeves would adapt this character to it realistically. I'm looking over here at my ranking list. I'll put it uh, between 7th and 8th in 8th place, that is. Uh, between... Okay, that's the first quarter of them done. Now we've got a big one to decide on. Some one that which I actually thought we were going get, to gonna get in the Batman and that is the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls would fit this world brilliantly and they've kind of done some setting up for it. But I'm, I, I don't really want to see them in the second movie because they are too similar to the plot of the first movie with, hey, uh, a bunch of the really rich people in Gotham are controlling things from behind the scenes and making decisions and no one knows about it. It's this massive conspiracy. That's literally the plot of the first movie and that's literally who the Court of Owls are. So that being said, I still want to see the Court of Owls, you know. I'll, I'll put them in third place. I think they could be interesting in between Clayface and Anarchy. Okay, we've got a few we can quickly breeze through now. Deadshot, Will Smith played him recently, and he was in Arrow quite a bit. I see no need to have this character rehashed or redone because there's nothing about him which really fascinates me or I would find interesting enough to revisit. But, you know, it, it's a different kind of thing to anything we saw in the Batman. So it wouldn't be bad. I'd put it in seventh place just behind Bane and above Clock King. Speaking of hired mercenaries, next we have Deathstroke. I'd love to see Deathstroke, actually, to be honest, because, like I said earlier, I'd like to see the Batman come against someone who is a physical match for him. I don't think Deathstroke would work as a primary antagonist, like was planned for Ben Affleck's Batman movie, but instead I think he would work great as, hey, Two-Face or the Penguin or Joker or anyone has hired this guy to kill Batman and he appears, you know, in parts of the movie. I think that would be really interesting. I'm going to put Deathstroke in th first place. Another hired mercenary we have is the Electrocutioner. That's a difficult word to say. Yet again, nothing super interesting here for me, so I'm going to put them just above Deadshot because I'd just like to see a different character to Deadshot. And next up, we have Firefly, the villain who's going to... Well, they're going to be the villain in Batgirl. But I would still love to see them in the Batman universe if Batgirl wasn't a thing because I think that kind of... Uh, sim uh, that kind of like iconography would look great in such a beautiful movie. S but, you know, they're going to be in Batgirl, so I can't rate them that high. I'm going to put them in 12th, just ahead of Condiment King. Next up, we have one who has recently become one of the most iconic Batman villains, arguably, Harley Quinn. So we know we're getting the Joker in this universe. Do I want to see a Harley Quinn? Kind of, yeah. We never got to see a proper good Joker-Harley relationship just because... You know, Jared Leto. I don't like Jared Leto. Um, you know, so we didn't get to see that, that solid relationship between the two characters. I just knocked the camera a little bit. Uh, but Margot Robbie did a really good take on this character. And she's kind of a definitive version. So I would would I want to see it recast? Not really. But, you know, I'd like to see another take on this character, per se. I'm going to put Harley Quinn in fifth place. Just above Anarchy and below the Court of Owls. Next up is a villain that I really, really want to see. Definitely going to put them in first place. I'll put that out there now. Hugo Strange. This would probably be my first or second choice for the villain in the next movie. I think they'd make a great antagonist in the Arkham Asylum TV show as well, just because of the nature of that show. We haven't seen Hugo Strange in live action. Gotham doesn't count because I didn't watch it. And I'd just love to see this version of Batman come up with someone who is not only his intellectual superior like the Riddler is, but moves through the same circles as Bruce Wayne because they're rich and entitled. So, Hugo Strange in first place. Next up, we have Hush. This is another villain that looks like we might have got them, but I don't want to see Hush now because their plot is basically what the Riddler did in The Batman with, you know... There, there are elements that would be different and there are elements of Hush that I think would be interesting to see, but it's just too similar to what the Riddler did in The Batman, so I can't rank them very high. I'll put them in 10th place, just behind Bane. This one might not count as a villain, but I'm going to shove them in here anyway. Jason Todd, a.k.a. 
the Red Hood. I so want this Batman to get a Robin. If I could choose one thing out of any of these future movies, it would be give the Batman a Robin. Do I want Jason Todd to be the first Robin? No, because Dick Grayson's the first Robin. Would I be, like, outraged by the idea? No. Would I like to see the Red Hood in the future? Definitely. Where am I going to rank them? Second place. Wow, that was a lot of questions and a lot of answers all in one go. Okay, this next name is kind of one of, the, one of the ones I was writing down just when I wanted to get to 40 names, and that's Joe Chill. If you don't know who Joe Chill is, Joe Chill is the murderer of Batman's parents. And I don't want to see Joe Chill, because that would mean origin story. Yes, you could do the story where Batman shows up to Joe Chill while he's Batman. He's like, hey, I'm not Batman, I'm Bruce Wayne, and you're the reason my parents are dead, and you're the reason Batman exists, and you're not going to tell anyone about it because you're so scared of me. And Joe Chill's like, oh, okay, that'd be fun to see, but I can't really see that fitting into any of the movies, so Joe Chill is in last place. He is the biggest supervillain of them all, though. And that brings us just over halfway there. Yes, 40 villains was too many, I have now realised. Next up, we have one who did appear in the Batman, but I thought we'd talk about them anyway, and that is Joker. I wasn't a fan of the scene the Joker was in in the movie, but I really love that deleted scene. Do I want to see the Joker be the villain in the next Batman movie? Definitely not. I don't think I'd want to see them be the main villain in any of the Batman movies. But if they're like the main character or the primary antagonist in the Arkham Asylum TV show, I'd be a big fan of that. I'd love that. So yeah, I do want to see this Joker. I'm going to rank them in fifth, no, fourth place, you know, just above Calendar Man. Next up is Joseph Blackfire, one of those characters that my main exposure to them is in the Arkham games. He's a cult leader. He's got some mysticism behind him. I think those elements would be really interesting in a Batman movie. Uh, and not like a primary antagonist, but they'd make a fun secondary antagonist. You know what? I'll shove them just above the Court of Owls, Joseph Blackfire. Next up, we have KG Beast, not a character that really interests me for any particular reasons, and they don't really repel me for any particular reasons. So I'm going to shove them in 18th place just behind Black Mask. Next up, we have Killer Croc. I would love to see Killer Croc. I think a giant behemoth living in the waters under Gotham would really work well in these horror vibes these movies could lean more into. And the fact that Gotham is flooded, if the next movie picks up straight from that point, Killer Croc would be such a terrifying villain. Obviously, not a primary antagonist. He'd be a great secondary antagonist. But I'd really like to see that. So I'm actually going to put him in third place. From Killer Croc, we have Killer Moth, one of the more silly Batman villains, but I think there is definitely something you could do with them that is serious. You know, why Why not would I want to see them? I'll put them in between Bane and Hush. Next up, we have Lady Shiva, one of the very, very few characters that Batman has never actually beaten in a fight, and the mother of Cassandra Kane. I'd love to see Lady Shiva. I just don't know how much you could fit her into one of these movies and how well she'd blend with this kind of tone. So I'm just going to shove her above above Clayface, actually, in seventh place. Next up, we have Mad Hatter. Man, I would love to see Mad Hatter. Just a deranged little guy running around kidnapping and killing people. I think it would fit into the tone of this universe so well. It would be so wacky and weird and horrifying. The more I talk about it, the more I really want to see Mad Hatter. And obviously, as I say for all of these, not as a primary antagonist, but just, you know, a serial killer just in the background. Like, oh, hello, Alice, what's bloody hell's going on here? He doesn't sound like that, but he would sound like that if you hire me to play him. But don't hire me to play him because I don't look like him and I would do a very good job. <laughs> Mad Hatter's in third place. Next up, we have Man Bat. I would love to see Man Bat for all the same reasons I would love to see Killer Croc. They can lean into this horror element just a horrifying creature terrorizing this city i think it would really really fit the tone of these movies and yeah it's kind of heightened and more than anything we've seen yet in this world but i think that matt reeves could fit it in as a nice secondary antagonist of just a crazy killer bat flying around attacking people that sounds like a lot of fun to me i'm gonna put them in third place again okay guys here's the big one it's mr freeze Do I want to see Mr. Freeze? Yes. Yes is the answer to that. Sorry for leaving such a long pause. I was just thinking about where I would rank this. My issue with Mr. Freeze is I'm not 100% sure how you'd get him to fit the tone. Matt Reeves says he has an idea for it. And I'd be up for seeing that idea. And I'd love to see Mr. Freeze. I think he's such a sympathetic villain. He's definitely in first or second place, I think. Mr. Freeze is going in first place. Maybe get Peter Capaldi, Brian... Cranston, someone like that, I think would do a great job. From Mr. Freeze to Mr. Zaz. I think a serial killer like this would be a lot of fun. Yes, we saw him recently in Birds of Prey, but I'm not a massive fan of that portrayal. 
I'd really like to see him. I'm going to put him in 10th place. This one is nice and quick and easy. We have Owlman. He's from a parallel universe most of the time and is like an alternative universe version of Batman and that... Pardon me, that's the giant straws. Would not fit the tone of this universe at all, so I'm putting him in second from last place because I think they... I'd rather see that than Joe Chill. This is my last giant straw. This video is too long. I don't know why I'm doing dumb stuff like that. Okay, next up we have Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy is a character I really want to see in live action for a while. Her uh, environmental terrorism is more relevant now than it's ever been. And I think you can make a really good message shining this character. She'd work as a primary villain. Uh, I'd love to see more women as Batman villains. But the big issue is how well does she fit into this world because my answer is i can't really see a way to get her to fit into it but i'd really love to see her so i don't know what else to say about it apart from i don't know where to rank her at all i'm gonna rank her highly just because if there's a way that matt Reeves can get her to work in this universe i'm all for it and i would love to see it so fifth place you know why not we've got poison ivy once in live action in a movie and that was uma thurman and that's a bad movie anyway another fun serial killer to talk about is professor pig my knowledge for this mostly comes from the arkham games as well you know i think this would be a fun serial killer to see i'm gonna put them in sixth place you know just usurping mad hatter in between poison ivy and mad hatter next up we have prometheus i feel like most people know prometheus as a villain in one of the seasons of arrow i can't remember which one but he was really great in arrow but he is a Batman villain. He's not He's not a Green Arrow villain. For those who don't know, Prometheus is like the opposite of Batman. He was raised in a poor family and both his parents, he watched both his parents who were criminals get killed by cops and then he went out and he travelled the world and he trained to become the best he could to take down do-gooders. And I would love to see this because it's a good moral challenge for Batman about, oh, are the police corrupt? That'd be an interesting message to put in a Batman movie. I think he's a physical challenge for Batman, but I just don't think he's got the iconography enough to really stand clear in a beautiful movie like the Batman. But I think he would definitely work. And I'm going to put him in 12th place. Next up is Ra's al Ghul. I know I said I don't want to see any ones we've already seen before in previous Batman movies recently, but I'm not a massive fan of the Liam Neeson version in the Nolan trilogy. It works for that world, but I think in the Batman you could do a more heightened version of this character, make it more weird, make it more mystical. I think that would be really, really interesting, and I would love to see that. I'm going to put Ra's in seventh place. Speaking about villains we've already seen, but I would love to see again, is Scarecrow. Yes, we got Scarecrow in Batman Begins, just like we got Ra's al Ghul, but once again, I'm not a massive fan of that interpretation. I would just want them to go balls to the walls weird, just make it really freaky. The mask, the, 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 the monologues, just all of that really, really lean into the horror aspect of it. I think he'd work as a great antagonist in the Arkham Asylum TV show. I think he'd make a great primary antagonist in a Batman movie. I would just love to see it. I just don't think he got the time to shine in Batman Begins and bringing him back would really give us this opportunity. I'm going to put him in fourth place. Four villains to go. We have Solomon Grundy born on a Monday. Uh, I'd like to see Solomon Grundy. I just don't know if the mystical elements of this character is too far-fetched for this world. I'm just going to shove him in, in 24th place, I think. Anyway, three villains to go. Next up, we have... Talia Al Ghul. This one's quite easy. I'm gonna put them. I'm gonna put her just behind Ra's al Ghul because if we're getting Ra's al Ghul, I want to see Talia Al Ghul. But I, I think it would be weird to get Talia Al Ghul without Ra's al Ghul. That I, I hope that made sense. Our penultimate villain is one of the most recognisable Batman villains, and that is Two Face. Do I want to see Two Face in this universe? Yes. Where do I want to see him? I don't bloody know. They killed the DA. Yes, you could bring him in. Bring Harvey Dent in the next movie, but don't make him Two Face. Yes, we saw Two Face. Sorry, Harlan Duffy is um, messaging me. Can you just stop? Uh, yeah, sure. I can record a podcast then, Harlan. I'm going to mute him. I'm, I'm so professional. I'm going to send him this clip. Okay. Two-Face. Yeah, 
he was in a movie recently and it, it, it was good. That was a good appearance of him. If he returned, I'd like to see him be more of a mobster. But I'm, I'm in no rush to see him again. So I'm going to shove him in 15th. Of course, I've saved the best till last, and that is, I don't know why I'm speaking like this, Ventriloquist. 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 I don't know a lot about Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. But I'd be happy to see them. Whatever. Who cares? Let's shove them in 26th place. Anyway, here is the final ranking uh, all 40 Batman villains ranked from how much I'd like to see them appear in this universe. First place, we have Mr. Free. Second is Hugo Strange. Third is Jason Todd. Fourth is Scarecrow. And fifth is Man Bat. I won't go through all of them. That would take ages. But the bottom five is Joe Chill, Owlman, The Calculator, Catman, Condiment King. I'd love to see Condiment King. Why is he, why is he so low? Anyway. Thank you for watching. Please like this video because it's going to take ages to edit. Please comment which Batman villain you'd like to see most and who you would cast as them. I'm always interested in seeing your guys' fan castings. And please subscribe to my channel if you have not yet because I will be posting many more videos about Batman, about Spider-Man, about Superman, about Doctor Strange. Name a superhero. I'll make a video on them. Probably not, but who knows? Maybe I will. <laughs> um... Yep, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!